Good morning. It's session two of my mini virtual course, How to Talk to Plants and Other Ways to Deepen Your Connection to Nature. This, this talk will be about decolonizing our approach. So as a white woman or you know, woman from European descent, I don't consider myself an expert on this topic at all. I believe that um, it's an ongoing conversation that we have to have with each other and um, it's going to take a life a, a lifelong journey to begin to change what's been put into action so this is um, more of us <laughs> um, since most of the people who will be following me or taking my classes are other white women. I think that for us to do herbal work and work with plants, we have to address this and hold each other accountable um, with our methods, with our, um, our understanding, our uh, language, um, and our unlearning and relearning. And so these are just some steps that I have been working towards doing this work. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I don't think we can be the experts. We're the students. And um, I just want to have a dialogue and have a conversation and have a space where we can um, make this something we're always talking about. So I'm gonna just jump right in. And the first thing I think that it's important for us to do is uh, look at our elders when it comes to wild plants we we live in a disconnected society but one two generations back they were much closer to the earth so what what are their stories what have you grown up hearing I know the first thing that always comes to my mind is my grandfather who grew up on a farm in Missouri. He turned 92 last week. So um, his history <laughs> of just his personal life has been vast, right? The, the ages he's lived through. And so for him, he always talks about how dandelions, those are just a regular green. Regular green they would eat. So if we if we remember what was talked about at the table when we were children with our our grandparents our great aunts and uncles and and if we were lucky to know our great grandparents rem remember the stories ask ask about the stories my grandfather at 92 has become quite senile and very difficult because he believes that he's believed you're not going to change his mind which I don't try to do, my mother does, I don't understand why. Um, so it's hard to have like a, a conversation with him, but I can ask stories, right? So I do, about a different time, a different era. It's gone, so far gone. But he has these connections with the land that we just don't have anymore, right? The stories of what they did in wartime, you know? when there were a lot of small farmers, family farms. You know, we, he just told me the other day that it was the small family farms or the victory gardens that got us through World War II, got us through the Great Depression. So let's take it back. And the first step is our elders. I'd love to hear the stories you have, the stories that you remember hearing. Okay. Second, is our ancestors of our lineage so what is your family's line i know my um family comes from ireland scotland and lebanon and syria so i have been actively working to study those spiritual and uh, herbal and medicinal and cultural lines 
Um, and we can learn so much from them and where the plants can connect with us now that are really a deeper calling. And because we can oftentimes be studying things from a native or a Chinese or an Ayurvedic, and that's great. I think we can learn a lot, but we, we also need to know our own. Where do we come from? Our, our own lineages, everybody's own lineage comes with all the same herbal, medicinal knowledge. So we have to also understand that. And, and we can learn and understand so much about ourselves and the medicine that we're really drawn to. For example, um, this might be TMI, but anytime I do any type of hallucinogenic, right? Um, I, uh, every time, no, a little older, I have some kids, so this isn't something I partake in with the frequency I did in my 20s. But um, every time I would declare that I am a tree. I am trees. I am a tree every single time. I am trees. Cl I already climb trees a lot anyway, but I would be like climbing trees, running on fallen trees. Like I was just, you couldn't tell me I wasn't a tree every single time. Every single time. Now, I know in this life I have strong connections with trees. My mother and my son were very serious about trees being cut down. But I begin studying, right? And what is incredibly important in the herbal books from Irish or Celtic? Trees, 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 trees. There are whole calendars written around trees. The deep medicine is of trees. Your girl saying she's a tree, and I knew, I knew every time I was saying that, that wasn't literally me. I'm, 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 I'm Katie, I'm in this life, but I knew it was a connection to something deeper that I was being able to tap into in that altered state, right? Lebanon, what's on the flag? What are the sacred trees written, around, written about in the Bible from Lebanon? Cedars, trees, trees. There's a connection that leads us back, right? So we can be over here searching for what these peoples did and these peoples did. What did our people do? Because we, they've been calling to us. They have been in ways we didn't realize or know. And what's beautiful is that as I'm looking through these books, I'm finding so many of the wild plants that grow right here where I am. So I can learn the traditions from my line that runs through my veins and the plants still grow here they still grow here. I have found plants growing in New York, also growing in Los Angeles. And I've seen it in certain elevations in Jamaica, like the plants grow, okay? But where, where are we led to learn how, to learn the language? So I really encourage as we study herbal medicine to study our own lines. And, and even if you don't know the exact tribes that you're from, from these places or, or anything like that, because sometimes it's hard and you can take a DNA test and even if, you know, not everyone believes and trusts the DNA test. So we do our best. The third is the indigenous people of the land we're on. This is, I'm not an expert with this. I'm very much unlearning and relearning. Um, while I'm, all, uh, I'm deeply into uh, Irish and Celtic books right now, I'm also learning about the, reading about the Alabama, and I'm, I'm probably gonna say this incorrectly, Cushetta um, native tribes that were in this region, Creek. Um, and, and not just learning their herbal and medicinal ways but just their history what happened on this this land um, because I think as herbalists you know so many of us I want to get land and I want to do this and that and grow this and do that and that's great right we want to we want to um, shift and, and and do better with the land but let's take it back a little bit so I live in Alabama right so 
if we're thinking about true justice, what about all of the reparations in 40 acres? Or all of the people on the Trail of Tears removed from this area? What does land back look like for that? And then where does my desire, it's just simply a desire for land and farms and stuff land. Really, I don't know. So these are, these are concepts and talks that we need to have with each other. And I'm specifically speaking to white people or um, people of European ancestry. Um, as we embark on these herbalist journeys, um, you know, I've been studying the ways that, um, I'm looking at the trees as I talk, uh, that uh, indigenous people, you know, had uh, the forests and the plants growing with it and how they managed the land, you know, the wild that we think is natural versus how it was kept to, um, to be utilized by all the creatures. And, and it's literally shifting my idea of how we exist on earth. So I think decolonization, like we, we can't just, but I'm going to, I'm going to decolonize everything. No, 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 no. Like we're so programmed with these ideas of how things are supposed to be. Schools and, and ed educational places are teaching agriculture based on these models. It's, it's first our mindsets. And first we have to realize that some of our ideas and thoughts aren't even conducive to, to earth, for real. And the ways we've been doing them for what, the past hundred years haven't yielded positive results, for real. And therefore we have to be open to changing them and to removing ourselves from the top tier and sitting down and learning and opening up the fact that the history of the land we're on and what it means how how is this land tended to? How can we do it in a sense of reverence? So begin with our elders, then to our ancestors, and then to the indigenous. Because that, that work, that last work is really hard for us, for our people, just to be real. The things we have to face are very hard. So, take it layer by layer so we can unfold and do the real work. I really, really would love for this space to be a constant conversation about that because I'm really learning. Like I said, I am not an expert um, at all. But I want to have a conversation because I know as a, as a white woman herbalist, I've been struggling with my place. And if we have a place and what the place is. But I also know that I wanted to come and do work for white people <laughs> to begin to shift our idea around how we exist on this planet with nature. And um, that's why this course, connecting deeper with nature in a real way and learning how to talk with the plants, to me I, is before any herbal work that can take place. Otherwise we're going with that same um, colonizer mentality. I'm going to take this, 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 I'm going to take this. We don't have the relationship. And this work, like I said, in step two, we, we did. We did before we did. We did have a deep connection with the trees. We did have a spiritual connection with land. We did. That's what we have to tap into. Not trying to take others spiritual connection to land find our own and then 
shift how we engage. Thank you so much.